Great. Well, why don't we make a start? Uh, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Ian Fawkes and I head up Research and Innovation at Cancer Research UK. And it's my pleasure to host today's launch event and to introduce a wonderful lineup of speakers, uh, which I will do very shortly. Um, we are clearly in undoubtedly un in, un in unusual times. Um, but this COVID pandemic has done, well, it's done many things, but I think it's done at least two things which provide some semblance of optimism, at least. Uh, the first is a very public reminder of the extraordinary power of science to, to really shine a light and illuminate our understanding. And it you know, really is quite extraordinary. The inroads the scientific community have made into COVID-19 in, in the six months that it's been known to science. Um, the second is the disruptive innovation uh, that this pandemic has, has created. Uh, it's changed how we work, it's changed how we meet, and indeed it's changed how we launch new initiatives like this one. Um, I'm pleased that we have almost 2,000 guests from around the world joining us for today's event. I mean, that was something that really is unthinkable six months ago that we could get so many people uh, into a single meeting. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, and indeed, good evening, uh, wherever you are. And thank you for joining the launch of an incredibly exciting partnership that we hope will change the way the world comes together to beat cancer, which really has proven to be one of the toughest challenges humankind has had to face. So we're excited to announce today a new global partnership and officially launch Cancer Grand Challenges, uh, which we believe will start a new era in global collaboration and cancer research. Now, it does not really, you know, it really does not seek to dismiss or, or replace what the National Cancer Institute and organizations like Cancer Research UK support right now, which is real curiosity driven, you know, investigator led research, but it's there to complement it with opportunities to enable scientists to approach problems in, in quite different ways with a, with a different scale of funding and to reach across national boundaries and, and form international collaborative teams with a scale of funding, I think, to meet the, the ambitions of those teams' own ideas. So the Cancer Grand challenges themselves are problems framed as a question, uh, which have proven you know, very difficult to solve over time. As Dr. Rick Klausner, who is a former director of the NCI and an important founder of the, the Grand Challenge concept, he's also emeritus chair of the, the antecedent of this initiative. You know, he said to me several times, scientists go into science to, to tackle and solve problems, to, to push at the boundaries of what's possible and really to discover and, and to shine that light uh, onto the unknown. And it's really a spirit we want to capture with this initiative. Today, we're gonna to hear from the leaders of Cancer Research UK and the National Cancer Institute uh, to share the reason for why this partnership has come into effect and to share their vision and their aspirations for this new global approach to cancer research. So we'll start with some very brief introductions. Uh, firstly, we're gonna hear from Michelle Mitchell and Dr. Ned Sharpless. Michelle is Chief Executive of Cancer Research UK, which she joined as its leader uh, back in November 2018. She's worked extensively in the charity sector here in the UK, having led uh, a large uh, organisation called Age UK, the Multiple uh, Sclerosis Society, as well as the Fawcett Society. And Ned is the director of the US National Cancer Institute. He was appointed by the Office's Office of the President of the United States in 2017. His career as a cancer physician scientist has seen him author over 150 papers, He's an inventor of 10 patents and is a leader in his own right in the science of aging field. So today uh, we're here, you know, formally launching the Cancer Grand Challenges and a global research initiative aimed at tackling cancer's toughest problems. So let's, so let's you know, let's talk about this, uh, Michelle and Ned. Um, perhaps I'll start with you, Michelle, and uh, perhaps you could share with us, you know, what does Cancer Grand Challenges and this global partnership mean to you? Great. Thank you, Ian. And welcome, everybody. Great first question. Um, some of you will know that Cancer Research UK launched the Grand Challenge in 2015. Grand Challenge represented a completely novel way for Cancer Research UK to fund research. Cancer Grand Challenges is an open platform with self-organising teams competing for a research award of up to £20 million, that's £25 million US dollars, focused on solving one of the Grand Challenges. It's large-scale, challenge-led problem-solving. 
The challenges are identified by the research community, reviewed, refined and issued by an eminent scientific committee. The scientific committee invites researchers from across the world to come together as stellar teams to solve the toughest and most important problems in cancer. And through this effort, transform our understanding of the disease to accelerate its diagnosis and improve its treatment or even prevent it occurring in the first place. Seven outstanding global teams over two funding rounds have been selected and funded with our funding partners, the Mark Foundation for Cancer Research, the Dutch Cancer Society and an anonymous donor. We have committed over £130 million to these seven teams focused on solving grand challenges. So I really want to express a special thanks to our early funding partners who joined us in believing that Grand Challenge was an important new approach to cancer research. Now, this new partnership brings the Cancer Grand Challenges investment to 426 million, and that's 550 million US dollars. There are countless other individuals and organizations who have helped us create the foundations for Cancer Grand Challenges. Organizations who have helped us run workshops to set the challenges, scientists involved in identifying the challenges, reviewing the teams, and supporters of our scientific summits. Really, it is because of the experiment of Grand Challenge that we are with you today to share our important next step. We are extraordinarily honoured and proud to be partnering with NCI to formally launch Cancer Grand Challenges and to begin to forge a new era of global research and discovery. Because we believe by working with NCI, we are able to double the number of teams funded each round and critically accelerate our impact in solving some of cancer's greatest challenges. So really together, we will exponentially grow our global community of researchers and critically patient advocates who will be working together, thinking differently and challenging each other to transform our understanding of cancer. The partnership with NCI and with scientists and funders across the world is hugely exciting to me and to all of the team at Cancer Research UK. Cancer Grand Challenges has a bold ambition to reduce the burden of cancer in the UK and around the world. And to get there, we know we cannot, we really cannot do it alone. Cancer Research UK works with and funds an outstanding community of researchers spanning basic discovery, translation and clinical trials. Cancer Grand Challenges provides a complementary new path, allowing us to fund research in a completely different way through global teams and the lens of large and complex problems. So really, I hope today is the beginning of building and galvanizing a global community of researchers, partners, funders, and patients who share our bold ambition to beat cancer. Of course, this has been a difficult and important time for biomedical research. So now, more than ever before, we need to take bold steps to keep pace with our bold ambitions and of course the world's expectations. And we know the best way of making significant progress is by working together. Brilliant. Thank, thanks, Michelle. I think that's a really great uh, answer. I'll, I'll put the same question to, to you, Ned, as well. Sure. Thank you, Ian, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today. It's a very exciting uh, new dawn of a, of, a, of a really exciting proposal. We're really thrilled to join Cancer Research UK in, in this important collaboration to foster novel cancer research on a global scale supporting multi multidisciplinary team research teams with awards, as Michelle said, up to $25 million or 20 million pounds. We believe that through international research collaboration, we can open up new possibilities and go further than we, than we could do independently. I think this is really a striking opportunity to leverage the experience of both organizations to encourage new and diverse teams of researchers to work together in innovative ways on the most compelling scientific questions. Many of the ongoing Cancer Research UK awards already really well align with NCI research priorities and our missions overlap in, in, in so many ways. So this is a really happy uh, union. 
This approach we're taking uh, will allow us to guide research in strategically informed directions while empowering the creative energy of multidisciplinary international teams to address some of the toughest challenges that offer the potential to advance cancer research. And most importantly, we think this is an opportunity to speed progress against cancer for patients, you know, our, our North Star for research at the National Cancer Institute. I think the design of Cancer Grand Challenges will yield truly innovative ideas to overcome barriers and further advance fundamental biological knowledge and its clinical applications to cancer. Yeah, th th thanks, Ned. Um, I mean, I think you're right. A lot of the a lot of our uh, approaches between our two organisations overlap, and I know we drew a lot of inspiration from, you know, your experience with the with the provocative uh, questions initiative. Um, I mean, these are two organisations, CIUK, NCI. You know, a very long uh, history. Uh, two of the largest funders of of cancer research in the world. Um, Michelle, perhaps we'll come to you again first. Why why do you think cancer grand challenges is, is needed as a, as a way of tackling this disease? Well, look, everyone uh, who's taking part in this event today knows that cancer is one of the biggest global, global challenges. It's a second leading cause of death worldwide, and it is growing with an expectation of 27.5 million new cases of cancer diagnosed each year by 2040. So, Look, no one individual organisation or even country uh, have the expertise alone to tackle cancer. I think that's why we need collaboration. Cancer Research UK and the National Cancer Institute are two organisations right at the forefront of the global fight against cancer. And I believe individually we are already hugely impactful, but together we can do even more. Our two organisations have a shared belief in the power of science to transform cancer outcomes. Around the world, we're making progress, but there are clearly some questions in cancer research which have been confounding scientists for years. So the grand challenges are hard, intractable problems. We believe that by funding international teams made up of the world's best scientists, we will give ourselves the best chance of catalyzing life-saving discoveries. Thanks, Michelle. And, and, and Ned, I guess, put that to you as well, you know, your perspective on, on why Cancer Grand Challenges. Sure. I, I see Cancer Grand Challenges as a way to encourage and support really high-risk, innovative cancer research on a large scale as a complement to our portfolio of investigator-initiated research trial research questions. So individual grants to researchers, you know, investigator-initiated research is what the NCI does. That's our mainstay and our main investment in cancer research. And that, that's here to stay, and that will always be a very strong commitment of the NCI. But what we're doing here is different, and it gets a different set of issues and challenges for the research enterprise, building on other large-scale efforts led by NCI over the years and adding this new international dimension to those efforts. We have very strong evidence at the National Cancer Institute that team science can be a very powerful engine for research project progress. And this, is, this effort is really team science writ large. When we think about teams coming together, not only from different disciplines, but also from different countries, I think this can really fuel creativity in, in new ways. Another very important aspect of this to me is the process by which the questions are identified, the challenge questions are identified using input and ideas solicited from across the research community, including people affected by cancer, including the patient voice in this and, and, and doing this and sometimes through international workshops. Mm -hmm. So really, I, I think the word grand in, in this ca captures it all. These, these really are cancer uh, grand challenges, the very apt descriptor, and it will allow us to pose these challenges uh, that are indeed grand, that are beyond the scope and scale of a single lab or team based at a single institution. Thanks. Um, so, so let's just look ahead, um, you know, a little bit. What, what do you both hope, you know, this partnership can achieve for, for the cancer research, uh, you know, in general and, and for people affected uh, by cancer? Um, Michelle, over to you. Yeah, sure. Um, look, well, we hope this partnership will result in advances in our understanding of cancer, which critically can be translated into better interventions, which allow people with cancer to live longer and healthier lives. It's as simple as that. And I know we all share in that hope for the future. Through Cancer Grand Challenges, we aim to make the radical progress against cancer that I believe very strongly that the world is waiting for. I'm confident that we'll get there because we're already seeing results from the first round of Cancer Research UK's Grand Challenge programme. And through this partnership, we can do even more. 
the excellence of research demonstrated to us that we were onto something very important in changing the course of cancer research and cancer outcomes. So, you know, perhaps a couple of examples might be helpful. Um, the Mutographs team are looking at DNA damage to understand more about unknown causes of different cancer types. Um, and through a recent study, they showed that in ex-smokers, healthy lung cells could start to repair the lining of the airways and help protect them against lung cancer. This highlights the benefit of quitting even after a lifetime of smoking and could provide a huge opportunity in future if we could harness these mechanisms in the clinic to enhance lung regeneration. Uh, another example would be researchers from the optimistic team have discovered that a common strain of intestinal E. coli could contribute to the development of colorectal cancer. Here, we've seen the findings suggest that the risk of developing colorectal cancer could be reduced and thousands of cases, thousands of cases potentially prevented through screening and eradication of particular strains of E. coli. But I feel, you know, this progress is just beginning, uh, you know, really just beginning, just just as five years ago, we could never have imagined funding seven teams and now partnering with NCI on a call with, I think you said nearly 2,000 friends, Ian. Um, so look, I'm incredibly excited at the prospect of what these teams will discover, how Cancer Grand Challenges can grow and the opportunity to work with other partners, donors, patient advocates to accelerate the impact of Cancer Grand Challenges. A win for global research is a win for individuals all across the world who are affected by cancer, but also the millions more affected by other diseases, as many of these questions are much, much bigger than cancer alone. So we want to be instrumental in advocating this new approach to biomedical science, and we hope that this is just the start. Um, we want and need other partners from right across the globe that join our global community. The major challenges in cancer research are numerous. It is going to take a large program beyond even what this partnership today can deliver. So we're inviting our friends, our colleagues throughout the funding world to join us in this ambitious effort to accelerate research that will benefit millions of people diagnosed with cancer each and every year. Thanks, Michelle. Um, and perhaps, Ed, uh, Ned, I could ask you to sort of reflect on, you know, what you think this, this partnership offers and, and, uh, for, the, for, for the community and for, for patients. Sure. I mean, we believe in the Cancer Grand Challenges model to stimulate innovation and, and, and thereby progress across the field. And that, that's why we're, we're doing this. We're joining with Cancer Research UK to support these highly promising efforts of multidisciplinary international teams. And I, I think it goes beyond the promise of it, specific achievements of the teams uh, that are selected for funding from, from this program. I think ideally, those successes that come from the, the things that we catalyze, their innovations and solutions can really lead to greater progress by other teams, you know, uh, perhaps across the globe. I fully, I fully expect that these, these, these efforts will see real invigorated innovation from the funded teams that will ultimately translate into progress for patients. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, thank you both of you there for, for sharing your, your insights and perspective on, on what this could mean and, and why. Um, you know, we clearly see how this, this partnership, you know, brings forward a, a new era for, for cancer research and discovery. Um, and it's my honour now to introduce our two, uh, two of our next speakers, uh, Paul Nurse and Dina Singer. Um, Paul Nurse is the chair of the Cancer Grand Challenges Scientific Committee, very important role. Um, he's also uh, heading up, he's director of the Francis Crick Institute based in London, uh, where he's also actively uh, leads a research uh, laboratory. Many of you will know Paul was awarded the 2001 prize, uh, Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, and that was for a really a fundamental uh, discovery, you know, about the, the fundamental process for, for life on Earth, Earth, and that's, you know, how cells, how cells divide. And then Dina is Deputy Director for Scientific Strategy and Development at the National Cancer uh, Institute, and herself a distinguished scientist. Uh, Dina is also a Senior Investigator at the NCI Centre for Cancer Research and leads a research a laboratory focusing on the molecular mechanisms regulating uh, gene expression. So welcome to you both. Um, 
Perhaps I can just uh, kick off with a with a question that I'll I'll put to both of you, and I'll, perhaps I'll start with you, Dina, um, and really, you know, sort of perhaps offer some reflections on why is the approach of grand challenges important to the research community? You know, what what really makes this different in your mind? Thanks, Ian. And I let me start by saying that, like Ned and Michelle, uh, I'm really very excited to be here uh, launching this new initiative. Uh, to answer your question, there are really two aspects to the cancer brand challenges that make it particularly compelling for the National Cancer Institute. First is the process by which the questions are developed that invites the cancer research community as a whole to think about the questions that we want to answer tomorrow, not the ones that we're already actively working on today. And these truly are grand challenges, questions that no single lab can tackle on their own. Second, the Cancer Grand Challenges leverages the ingenuity of teams to unravel the complexity of cancer that we learned from the decades of investigating and initiating research. As Ned mentioned, research driven by the ideas of individual scientists is still central to building our understanding of cancer. But to unravel the difficult and critical questions of cancer complexity, we need to complement our current approaches with global efforts, with interdisciplinary teams of investigators, with diverse and varied expertise. And I think that's the essence of the cancer Grand Challenges program. The Cancer Grand Challenges builds on a foundation, a solid foundation of successful programs supported over the years by both the National Cancer Institute and Cancer Research UK. Michelle already described some of Cancer Research UK's programs. Let me tell you about a few of NCI's parallel programs. For the past nine years, NCI has sponsored the Provocative Questions programs that Ian mentioned earlier on. That program, like the Cancer Grand Challenges, engages our research community in defining important problems and paradoxes in cancer research that have been underexplored to date. But unlike the Cancer Grand Challenges, it doesn't assemble teams to address those problems. In another example, since 2017, the NCI has led the Cancer Moonshot Program. Like the Cancer Brain Challenges, the Moonshot Program supports team-led research. One example of that is the Human Tumor Atlas Network, which is focused on constructing three-dimensional atlases of the morphological, cellular, and molecular evolution of human cancer. Another example is the Immuno Oncology Translational Network, which is working to accelerate the discovery of new immune targets for cancer research. While these programs are indeed led by teams of researchers, they're all US based. So, what sets the Cancer Grand Challenges apart from NCI's current program is the opportunity to establish international, multidisciplinary collaborations to address a disease that has no borders. Doing this on a global scale will allow us to take advantage of novel technologies and approaches such as high frequent screening, artificial intelligence, and importantly, expanded, excuse me, expanded access to patient samples. All efforts that are difficult for individual groups to undertake. That is an important feature Cancer Thanks, Dina. I think that's 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 really uh, powerful. Paul, perhaps I'll put the same uh, question to you, really, in terms of you know reflecting on you know why you think this is an important approach. Well, Ian, as as you said in your um, excellent introduction, if I may say so, research can be done in a range of different ways, and the grand challenges approach is a, a very effective one. It's a very good approach. It's actually been around for centuries. Um, some of you will be familiar with the longitude problem in the 18th century, um, which the British Admiralty were trying to solve to um, deal with navigation of their warships across the globe. 
And this was a grand challenge to find how to detect longitude. It led to Harrison's clocks. It was successful. The Admiralty didn't want to pay the money for it, but that's um, <laughs> typical of the bureaucrats, of course. A great account of it in we'll Dark Sabell's book. Yes, we're, we'll be different. <laughs> we'll be different. <laughs> now, what's the point of it? What it really, um, grand challenges that we're looking at here, what it really is identifying is no single scientist, no single institution, no single country can beat cancer alone. We need to put in place a collection, a variety of scientists with different backgrounds um, that can come from different geographical settings and different institutional arrangements, all bringing different talents from across the world to tackle an important problem. And not only that, but as Ned has emphasized, it, they will be supported by funding at scale. So they can afford to be bold, bold in what they're trying to deliver and to some extent tolerant of risk as a, a consequence of that. And this sort of arrangement, if it's managed well, um, can lead to great imagination, to creativity, hopefully unconstrained creativity. It challenges us scientists, frankly, um, to be curious, to unite, to tackle big problems that haven't been addressed before. It allows us to bounce ideas off each other in a multidisciplinary and collaborative environment. So I think it's a great approach. It complements, as you said, other approaches, but it's a great approach to deal with those really difficult um, problems that we have to deal with using multidisciplinary approaches. Thanks, Paul. I mean, Paul, you, you've worked across, um, you know, all across the world, actually. You've, you've worked in different institutions. You've worked in, in the US at, at Rockefeller University. You, you sit on lots of advisory boards. Why do you think the sort of, you know, the, the global collaboration is so important? I mean, it, it's, if, if that isn't too obvious a question, um, you know, but clearly it is. What, what's, your, what's your sense about the sort of global nature of, of this program? Well, the first thing is to give you an obvious answer. Cancer is a global problem. It's a problem that affects us all. And wherever any of our 2,000 um, guests that we have here today, wherever they've come from, it will be a great concern to all of them in each of the different communities um, of, of their origin. And all cultures and all societies agree with that. And because cancer is complex, and let's not underestimate the problem, it's a highly complex disease it needs different approaches. We've seen very major progress in the last 50 years during my research lifetime. Um, and it is beginning um, to uh, be uh, resolved. We're beginning to understand what's going on, but we still have a long way to go. And we need to attract the best scientists. We need to attract their interest and engagement from a wide range of fields, from some uh, fields that normally don't get involved in cancer research. And we've seen that um, happening already with the seven teams that were put together um, by the earlier Cancer Research UK initiative. They've made really good progress. And they have um, profited, it seems to me, from the different local cultures and the different disciplines that they were derived from. And this working in a different way, working outside the more comfortable home environment, I think is, is, is very uh, important um, uh, indeed. And not only that, I think it provides an opportunity to grow a new community of researchers, researchers that do look more outward, that will be more collaborative, and that will interact better with each other. So I think it will contribute to the future of research and make a major contribution to our understanding of this really difficult disease of cancer. Brilliant, thanks, thanks, Paul. Um, I mean, that that probably brings me neatly on to uh, the, the next question. Um, you know, we've talked about the different cultures, we've talked about the, the power of global collaboration. Um, and Dina and Paul, you know, you've, you've both got an important role here, but, but what in your mind are the sort of standout qualities that we're gonna be looking for from the teams that ultimately we fund? And perhaps Dina, I could come to you first on that. Yeah, sure, Ian. I, mean, I think each one of us has already touched on the answer to this question in one way or another, uh, perhaps Paul the most eloquently, but um, I think what uh, we're going to be looking for 
is that this partnership fosters a really highly competitive process that's designed to promote scientific creativity of the highest order. So we're going to be focusing on teams of researchers and patients, and I think that's important to emphasize, who have a demonstrated ability and a robust plan to collaborate, to share data and resources in a coordinated and efficient way, which is really going to be critical to furthering our understanding of cancer. So we're looking for innovation, tenacity, and flexibility, a willingness to take on something tough and to adjust course if the first or even the second approach doesn't work, and to work in strategic and goal-oriented ways. So I think that's what we'll be looking for. Thanks, Dean. Um, Paul, you're, you're obviously chairing the, the panel ultimately that's going to be, uh, you know, play the critical role in selecting the, the teams that go forward with, with the funding. Um, you know, what for you is, is important in, in what you're looking for? Well, firstly, I just want to agree with Dinah what she just said. I'm completely um, in agreement with that. Um, I'm trying to think of what to add. Um, one word that comes to mind is diversity. A grand challenge can encourage diversity diversity of thought, diversity of experience, of course, and also of expertise. And that diversity working in a team um, can make more than the sum of the parts if it's, uh, um, if it's working well. And it provides um, approaches to a problem um, which truly allows um, better collaboration and collaboration at scale. So that's one thing, diversity. Another word, um, is boldness. Um, it, what we're looking for here is bold applications that will um, be based on this new thinking and that will be based on new collaborations. So it's not really supporting a normal scientific project at a, a larger scale. It's trying to lay out ideas with, with depth and with direction um, that is new and couldn't be achieved without that diversity and also level of um, support. And it, the existing teams again demonstrate that. They've come from different disciplines that in the past we've not seen in cancer research, obviously from biology as well as biomedicine, um, but from computer science, even astronomy. You know, we've gone to the stars. I mean, even that's contributing um, what's um, been going on with the, um, the past grand challenges. And they are behaving from, I'm quite new to this, I wasn't involved in the earlier um, in the earlier initiatives, but they appear to be working as a single unit, and that isn't easy to, to deliver. And that is what we will have to deliver in this present um, round. And it does require work. You have to learn how to talk to scientists that come from a different background, different sorts of languages, um, different cultures, maybe even different languages themselves um, to actually um, get close connections and to drive things um, forward. I guess what I feel we're looking for is a team of world leaders that will uh, put their own egos to one side, work together, um, like working together and respecting each other and delivering the goods. I think it could be a very powerful initiative. Brilliant, thank you. I, th I think the multidisciplinary point is is a good one. And you know, going back to your longitude uh, example, if I remember rightly from the book, John Harrison started his career as a carpenter. Um, you know, wasn't wasn't a chronologist. So uh, it just shows the diversity of thinking can do. Um, so Paul, um, you know, again, as, as as chair of our of our uh, science committee here, you know, how how confident are you that you know when a challenge is is, is tackled, it will transform our understanding and, and potentially our you know, treatment of cancer? Well, I think we can succeed if we take the following approach, that we look upon a challenge as something which is apparently just outside our grasp, a fundamental problem, but perhaps just beyond what we would normally think that we could tackle. So it, it would appear elusive we have to have aspirations to solve it. Um, we have to identify such problems and then work out how we can solve them. How can we achieve a success in that difficult problem? And we know there's a whole range of those problems. I mean, why do cancers grow in certain tissues and not others? 
How can we distinguish between a cancer that can be lethal and one that doesn't apparently cause any harm? How do microbes in our bodies affect the development of tumours? These are all obvious questions that we've had out there, but we've been skirting them to some extent, and now we ought to take them on. Because they're, although they're big problems, they're solvable problems, and we need to solve them. And they will be solved with demand, with uh, bold and novel approaches so that we can break them down, you know, use imagination like a sort of laser light, break them down into um, their individual components because we've got the resource, the money, and the people um, to do that. So I'm hopeful that um, the grand challenges will drive new thinking and will come and address new problems that couldn't be tackled before. And perhaps we'll even get some things done which seem on the edge of being impossible. Boldness, tolerant of risk. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Um, so, so uh, you know, I think we've heard a lot there from, from leadership, and it really is a, a tremendous occasion for, for cancer research uh, globally, I would hope. So we're going to move now to our signing ceremony, uh, albeit virtual, uh, where Michelle and Ned will uh, really sort of cement this new uh, partnership um, Federal Express has been busy and I believe has, has sent you uh, various documents to sign, which I'll invite you uh, to do now. Um, and for others to please, you know, do feel free to share this on uh, social media, hashtag Cancer Grand Challenge, the modern way. Um, so what Ned and um, Michelle are signing uh, broadly reads that the Cancer Grand Challenge's official partnership launched by and between Cancer Research UK and the National Cancer Institute ceremonially signed on the 27th of August 2020 as two of the largest funders of Cancer Research Unite to define a new era in cancer research and discovery for the future benefit of cancer patients signed on and behalf of their respective organisations by Michelle Mitchell and Ned Sharpless. Brilliant, there we go. <laughs> And we'll get we'll get them FedEx the other way so you can both countersign. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you, thank you both very much. Uh, that's that's fantastic. So um, we're going to hear from all of our speakers together now for a for a short um, group discussion. Um, time's moving on, so we'll 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 be quick here. But I think it is important we just uh, open this up for a little bit of a, a wider discussion. And perhaps I'll turn to to Ned and Dina. Um, First of all, um, and perhaps but just by again, you know, uh, how do we envisage um, cancer grand challenges advancing uh, cancer research? Ned, I'll come to you first. Sure. The, the, the cancer grand challenges program, you know, strives to identify challenging and difficult programs, uh, problems that are limiting uh, our progress today. And by bringing together these really uh, creative minds from across the globe and, and from different disciplines and different fields of cancer research, as well as the physical sciences and physics and math and computational biology, we, we believe we'll gain major in, insights into these problems and, and that, that will go further the goal of, of benefiting our, our patients. Brilliant, thank you. And, and Dino, um, you know, why do you think now is the right time for, for this partnership to deliver impact? Ian, this is absolutely the right time. It's the time to leverage the tremendous progress that we've made in cancer research in, in recent years. Not just promising leads, but real results for individual patients and at the population level. So immunotherapy and precision medicine are really pertinent examples of a pattern that we see in cancer research and we see over and over. Both have had remarkable success in treating patients. But at the same time, we're learning about important limitations to these approaches. So addressing these limitations is one of the challenges before us now. Through the Cancer Grand Challenges, we have an opportunity to apply multidisciplinary, international ingenuity and today's technology and computing tools and power to tackle the key problems in cancer research. Thanks, Dina. Um, Michelle, um, you know, we, we've, we've heard a lot about um, the science today, the power of discovery and what we hope we can, um, you know, really achieve with our, with a, you know, world uh, collaborations in, in cancer research. But what, what, from your perspective, what does this mean for patients? 
Well, one of the great privileges of my role, and there are many, is every single week I have the opportunity to speak with people, their loved ones who've, who have cancer or lives have been touched by cancer. And I think the message they would wish me to give today to everybody listening is progress can't come quickly enough. Uh, as we see in our lives, too many people run out of treatment options, too many people and too many lives are cut short by the disease. So the scale of the challenge must be matched by our ambition and our commitment. And I really hope this partnership will send a clear message to everyone in our community about the scale of our ambition and our determination to make progress for everyone affected by the disease, as many of us sadly are. We're committed to keeping people affected by cancer at the heart of what we do, and that includes Cancer Grand Challenges. Our patient representatives help us to shape the challenges we set and work with our funded teams to ensure that patient impact stays at the heart of the research we carry out through this programme. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so Paul, um, you know, Ned and Michelle have arguably done the hard work signing the, the certificate of and ceremony. Um, you're chairing our panel. You've got a lot of work to do coming up. Um, so what's, what's next? Well, we have to deliver what Michelle just said, um, very nicely summarised. And we'll start by announcing a new set of challenges that will be in October. They've been developed by the uh, Science Committee but um, they've been based on um, a lot of consultation with research leaders and also people affected by cancer, um, a, a very extensive consultative process. So uh, those challenges will be relevant, they will be important, and we have to um, produce a way of working that will deliver successful outcomes, successful choices, successful outcomes. And I know I speak on behalf of all the scientists on the, uh, on the scientific committee that we're excited to be involved in this initiative, honoured in fact to be involved in this initiative, and we are confident that it will lead to advances that will help cancer patients worldwide. It is going to work. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. I think that's a really Good point, actually, at which to to end this uh, this the launch of this initiative. Um, I think you've summed it up brilliantly. Um, so we are running out of time. Um, I think it's just going to be to me to say a thank you uh, to all of those who've attended this event, uh, to thank our speakers, uh, as you've both heard, as you've all heard from both Cancer Research UK and the National Cancer Institute. We're incredibly pleased to be able to share the news of this new partnership and, and really the opportunity it does present. Um, there will be a link to this session recorded. Uh, we'll make that available next week and we'll share that with all participants and the public. In the meantime, uh, I would encourage everyone on the call to visit the cancergrandchallenges.org website or cancer.gov. You can find the latest updates on the Grand Cancer Grand Challenges programme there. Um, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to teams at the NCI and Cancer Research UK for really putting this partnership together and a huge amount of work over the, the past year really to make this happen. And you know who you are um, and a huge thank you, I think, from all of us for that. And finally, thank you to Melanie Santos and Jenny Lacey for the, and the production team for putting this event on. Um, in the meantime, go to the website, check out the Grand Challenges, and you know we look forward to posting the new challenges in October and, and embarking on a new era for global cancer research. Thank you all for joining us. <laughs>